Hey, welcome back. It's your guy Engineer Mojo back again with another car tutorial video. Today we are working on a 2003 Toyota Tacoma valve cover seal replacement. The gasket for your valve cover replacement. Full tool list is displayed on the screen. Please feel free to pause, take note, and also full tool list description is in the video description down below. For this particular job, first thing I do is take plenty of pictures from all different angles as I'm going along. This way I don't forget anything. Now we'll be speeding up the video as I take certain things off, but feel free to pause and slow down the video as I'm going along. First step I do is remove miscellaneous vacuum hoses, as you see pulling from various air boxes from the front of the motor. They're simple, they pull right off with just a tug of your hand. Remember, pictures are your friend when putting this back on. Next, I like to remove the air box, it just makes it easier and more room to get in there. Remove the sensor there. Then there's a series of three bolts. And you can use a Phillips head or socket to remove that will remove the air intake arm from the actual throttle body here. Here's the removal process. Bolts being removed. Also note there may be a wire loom attached to the air intake arm that just snaps right off from their plastic holders. A good spot to take additional photos right here. Here you see access to your PCV valve and grommet. I will be replacing that for this video, but that's optional. You don't have to if you don't want to. The hose pulls right off by hand. To assist my memory, this is where I take tape and a pen and I write PCV on the tape and wrap it around that hose. This will remind me where that goes. I'll do this for various other items as I go along. Next, you'll disconnect a series of three sensors on your throttle body. This encompasses your accelerator position sensor and your throttle body position sensor. Here I use a little flathead screwdriver to help me remove a sensor. At this stage you'll see some access to a really large wire loom that's on the back of your engine. As you see it's right here to the left, I'm moving my arm along. Large wire loom, there is one bolt that you'll have to unbolt there. And I can't really get a video camera back there, but it's a bolt back there and you just have to remove that bolt. Next up is throttle cable remover. I take a tape measure, measure the distance of the adjustment, and I note that for when I reinstall it, I can get it pretty close. I take a flare nut wrench here, and I go ahead and remove the two nuts, loosen and remove, unhinge the seated clip, and then remove the throttle cable and just remove it out the way. I prefer to tuck the cable right behind the brake master cylinder here. There are various coolant hoses going to your throttle body and all around that area. So this is where I use tape and pen again. Plenty of pictures. Pictures serve as a reminder of where things go. It's a good idea to have a catch can or maybe a small towel to catch any residual coolant that may drip out. Take note upcoming when you remove your throttle body, you'll have a gasket here. It's a good idea to replace that during this process. I gave you the part number down below as well. Next step is to finish removing the throttle body. There's four bolts here that you remove. Lefty loosey, get those right off. At this point, you're starting to get some really good clearance and seeing what's going on there. As you see, next we have the fuel rail and then we have also the intake runners. All that stuff is coming off next. Let's start off here with removing a small vacuum hose from off top of the intake runners. Next is removal of a vacuum hose attached to your brake booster. Just take pliers and slide that right off. Now you have this kind of upside down U-shaped bracket that holds in the wire loom. Just want to unbolt that. Now I'm going to take you to the opposite side of the intake runner. There's a small vacuum hose back here. You just want to just plop that right off with your hand. Very easy. And here I'm just showing you how it routes underneath your intake runner. Definitely get into the home stretch of item removal here, thankfully. Now you want to remove the top of your intake runner. There's a series of bolts here. You can either use a Torx bit or a socket to remove these. You can see each location I remove in this video montage. With the bolts removed, you can now remove the top of the intake runner. You'll notice there is another gasket. It's a good idea to go ahead and replace that. Again, part number is in the video description down below. As you see also, I do re-screw in the bolts just so I don't lose them as I'm going through this process. Next up, you have removal of one bolt for a ground wire. 
remove that from the back side of your intake runner. Moving along to the other side of the intake runner, here you see a, a couple more bolts that you will have to remove. You remove those, pointing each one out, and you'll be able to remove the bottom of your intake runner. Here's a quick video montage showing each bolt removal. If you're not as experienced with car maintenance, it may be a good idea to watch this. If you are more experienced, you can go ahead and skip to about 614 in the video. Now with the intake completely removed, you see there are another two gaskets that you'll want to replace. And you also want to cover up your intakes with some tape, make sure no foreign material drops in there. That's a very important step right here. Next up is your spark plug wire and spark plug removal. It's a good idea to change all this out while you're in here. I do have a full video of this process in the video description below, uh, but that's a different topic for a different video, so I didn't want to go too much detail in this video. But down below in the video description, you can see my whole detailed process of removing your spark plugs and reinstallation. But these are pretty easy to remove. And you can tell to make life easy, I thread the bolts back in to the valve cover to make your life easy, don't lose bolts. Next up is the least favorite part of this job for myself, and that's the injector wire loom removal. It's covered with a piece of plastic, and that plastic is pretty flimsy, and it will break and flake as you're removing this. There's only two bolts on each side, um, but it's not the best. Now, I have read on other forums that you can tape this uh, electrical loom rail around, and that will keep all the plastic piece kind of together as you're pulling this off. My covers didn't feel too brittle, so I chose not to do that. But removal, quote unquote, is pretty easy. Just unplug the injectors and kind of have that to the side. It's not a full removal, as you'll see later in the video. The goal here is to get enough space to ship me the valve cover out of the engine compartment. So right here, I'm also disconnecting two plugs, two sensor plugs, and that will loosen up the loom here a little bit more, so we get a little more space. As you see, you get a little more space, a little more space, and you'll be able to maneuver the valve covers out of the engine bay with some of the space. Now, I've already taken one of the valve cover bolts off. Just want to show you the gasket and the bolt and how those interact. As noted in the beginning of the video with the tool list and parts list, you'll need to replace all of these gaskets during this install. I went ahead and removed all the valve cover bolts. There's about eight of them, I believe. And then I take a mallet to hit the valve cover pretty softly just to break the seal. And I go ahead and shimmy the valve cover to the front of the engine bay compartment, and it comes right out. Here we have the removed valve cover. Next step we have is to remove the old seals for the spark plug tubes. As you see, each one is held in kind of by a small metal tab there that's connected onto the valve cover. You just want to take a flathead screwdriver and some pliers and gently bend that back just enough so that you can start shimmying and removing that seal away from the valve cover. These seals are seated pretty well into the valve cover, so use a combination of a flathead screwdriver and a 90 degrees needle nose pliers to kind of dig in there and take out the remnants of the seal. As you see here, I'm taking the needle nose plier, kind of maneuvering, getting out the last meat of the seal. Be careful not to dig too much. You don't want to scuff and, and scar up the valve cover. And just repeat this process for both valve cover. So you'll have three on this valve cover and then three other seals on the other valve cover. Next, I've removed the old grommets from the valve cover. Just use a flathead screwdriver and a little hammer and knock those right off real gently. Also remove the PCV valve as well at this stage. Next we have removal of the old seal that easily just pops right off with your fingers. Just pull up, pull off and remove. Also did a little cleanup of the valve cover. Just clean it up a little bit, it was a little grimy. 
At this stage, I take a generic degreaser and also maybe a towel and also a plastic scraper, clean up the mating surface of the valve cover. There are a few other components you want to take off from your engine. You have these half moon caps that you want to remove. I'll show you what those look like particularly, but I'm pointing one out right there, half moon there. You also have a cap in the back of your engine compartment. And I'll show you what that looks like as well. Here's where I take channel locks. I wrap in some tape just to avoid damage to the half moon caps. Pull it right out, just pops right on out. Not really a hard tug there. Pop another one right on out and back. Couldn't get a good shot of this with the camera, but you take a swivel head socket and wrench to get back to your camshaft cap in the back. You unbolt that. Again, I take some channel lock pliers after unbolting with the tape. Grasp the cap and pull it right off. Here's a shot of what that looks like. So from this video clip, you should be able to tell what to unbolt there. Just make sure you know the orientation. Now underneath that camshaft cap was this small, kind of hard rubberized plastic piece that sits right in there. Here's the orientation of how that sits. And that's the last piece you need to remove. With everything removed from the cylinder head, I like to lay everything out. Now again, for a V6, you have two cylinder heads, and this is just looking at one and the components removed from one side. You have two half moons, and you have one camshaft cap and black rubberized piece as well. Look at the half moons. Note the orientation. You want to put them back in the same way. One side should usually be dirtier than the other. So that's how I can tell how I took them off and how I put them back in. Here comes the fun, putting on the new pieces that you ordered. So I'm taking the old cylinder head. I'm going to be applying uh, the new spark plug tube gaskets and seals, as well as a new PCV as well. To install the spark plug tube seals, you just want to take a 32 millimeter socket and a rubber mallet and tap those in gently until it's flush with the valve cover. And I'll show you a close up of what that looks like. Here's a close up of how flush the seal should be. You see the lip, the outer lip is flush with the valve cover. After tapping those in with the 32 millimeter socket and mallet, just remember to bend back the tabs to secure those in place. I hit screwdriver to gently press those back into place. Next up is installing your gasket. So I like to do a little prep and clean the interior groove on the valve cover. I take a flathead screwdriver and a shop towel and just wipe in there and get any kind of foreign debris out. This so I can get a cleaner mating surface in there. Next up, I lay the gasket right into place. It's actually very, very easy and nice. It sits really cleanly within the groove on the valve cover. You just go ahead and press it in with your finger all the way around. PCV installs next, but only the grommet, as you could damage the actual valve if you put it on at this process. But it's pretty easy, you just take the grommet, you press it in. Again, the valve itself will be installed once the valve cover is back in the car. Here I'm showing you where you'll be applying gasket maker. This is the camshaft cap, the half moons. Just showing where I'll be placing that gasket maker now. Here's the sealant. I showed you the part number for this earlier in the video. Just take a nice thick bead and lay it on in there in the half moon. Here's a close up of how thick that should be. Next we have the camshaft end cap. Take a small bead, well not small bead, but take a pretty healthy sized bead and apply it to the end there. Now the factory service manual says apply this bead of sealant here and also on the other side of the cap. Now some people apply it around the whole half circle of the black cap. Uh, you can or cannot, it's up to you. I haven't had any issues to date, just following the manual. Here's a close-up shot of the half moon and the camshaft cap installed back. See the half moon? You want to see some sealant being squeezed out when you install it. And also the camshaft cap. I don't have the bolts in, but you kind of see it in place there. At this stage, I'm applying the extra sealant that's called out in the factory service manual. In the top left corner of the screen, you'll see the locations of where you should apply extra sealant. I apply about a nickel sized dollop on these locations. Here's a close up showing the extra sealant I applied at the half moons, at the camshaft caps.
try to get you a good shot there showing you what I did. Prior to installation of valve cover you want to apply a light film of oil on the inside of the spark plug tube seals. This just allows for easier installation and less chance of damage to the seals as they're being installed over the spark plug tubes. As promised you're getting to the good part. The gasket is installed on the valve cover now it's time to shimmy the valve cover back onto your cylinder head. Now I'm going to show you right here the route I take. Remember I didn't remove completely the wire loom for the fuel injectors so you kind of have to shimmy and finagle the valve cover back in place but it's not too hard at all. And it's just about back in place there. Very important step here the torquing of your valve cover bolts. Now I did specify the torque spec in the beginning of the video it's also in the video description down below. Do not, I repeat, do not over tighten these bolts. It may seem like it's a light torque spec, but trust me, these break very easily. Ask me how I know. Ask me, for real, in the comments. How do I know? They will break, and then you will be mad at yourself. So make sure you use the proper torque setting. Torque those down. It will feel really light, but Toyota engineers, they knew what they were doing. So just follow the factory service manual torque spec, and you will be A-OK. -okay. Now after you torque those down, all you have left is reinstallation of your spark plugs, plug in all the additional sensors, and kind of reinstall everything that you took off to get to your valve cover. And thankfully, that will be all. Just continue on and do the next side of your valve cover, and you'll be good to go. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Any tips to make this easier? Because I'm sure I will be doing this again in the future. I don't plan on giving away my Tacoma. Please comment down below. Let me know how to make this easier. Make my life easier and also make other viewers' life easier. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, comment. I really enjoy hearing from the community. I also love being in the community. So thanks again for watching. I'm out.